Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Boardroom, where as always, we are speaking to some of Malta's best business minds to get to the bottom of the questions that everyone has about the economy at the moment. Now, as always, The Boardroom is currently being streamed live. So if you're watching us on Facebook right now, you can add your comments and your questions below, and we will try to pass them on to the interviewees in real time. However, if you didn't manage to catch us live, don't worry, this will be streamed back on who's who.mt, Malta's leading business portal. Now, today's topic of choice is real estate and whether real estate has been affected by the COVID pandemic. And to help us get to the bottom of that, we're gonna be speaking to Kevin Buttigieg. He's the chairman of Remax Malta and Ian Kazalani, the MD of Bel Air Property Malta. Welcome to the boardroom, Kevin and Ian. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Nice to see you too. So, Kevin, I'm going to come to you first. Real estate has been one of the hardest hit industries on the island. Really hard hit from the start of COVID. But why is that? I mean, I think a lot of people would be surprised to realize that it has been so hard hit. Could you give us a bit of context to that, please? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, I mean, it all starts from the basics. Obviously, um, Malta, unlike a lot of countries, our uh, rental market is is a very high percentage of uh, foreign employees are are involved in the rental market. As as we have a very low percentage of Maltese renting compared to other countries, and obviously, with these people, some of them leaving because maybe they preferred to handle the situation in their own countries, and. Uh, obviously created a bit of a gap in the rental market. Um, people going through the whole situation of uh, wages being reduced and, and uh, all different types. So getting in a position where you can't really afford um, your property or the property you're renting. So, um, and all the Airbnb properties that were all geared up for this summer, <clears throat> which uh, obviously aren't gonna see any tenants, I, I would say, more than almost 100% of them have been canceled up until at least the end of July for now. And then they see what happens in the in the upcoming future. <coughs> so uh, this is definitely from the real estate side, it's the rental market quite uh, severely. Um, obviously, there's the situation that all restaurants and, and, and bars are closed. So the landlord of these restaurants and bars um, some of them have given, you know, substantial discounts and some of them have actually, you know, given the property for free for the time being. So <coughs> in, a, in many cases, this, this has been uh, an issue which we've had to learn to live with. And obviously it's a domino effect. So when these things start happening, other things start happening. <coughs> the sales process uh, has uh, slowed down because people are uncertain. It brings a lot of uncertainty. I mean, None of us, even the simple people like like myself, don't know really what's happening out there. We don't know when this is going to end. It could be three months. It could be six months. It could be two years. No one knows. And that creates uncertainty. And uh, obviously, that has caused uh, a slowdown in the market. Having said that, um, we're still seeing some business, which is great. Um, to a certain extent, a bit better than what we predicted. But on the whole, yes, the, the market has slowed down and the transactions are, are down by, by quite a high percentage for the time oh. being. Okay, thank you for that insight. Ian, has that been a, a similar experience on your end as well? Yeah, I mean, as, as Kevin said, I mean, it's, it's, it's effect um, um, is felt across the sector in different ways, landlords, tenants. Um, the uncertainty always creates, creates unease. Um, so people are not sure whether it's the time to sell, whether it's time to buy. Um, obviously, people working in the sector haven't had haven't had it easy. Uh, incomes were affected. There was no no real support. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a stormy patch. Um, um, saying all that, it's it's no one can really you know predict how long this could go on or how short it could go on for. Um, and it's really the uncertainty that needs to be. Uh, ideally overcome. Absolutely. And I'm going to ask you a question and I want a yes or a no answer because this is the question we all want the answer to. Ian, I'll come to you first. Are prices going to go down? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
have to elaborate on. We'll, I'll have to elaborate on later. But I say I, 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 I assume yes. Across across the board, there will be some reductions. Doesn't mean that prices are going to crash. Doesn't mean that uh, it's going to be across the board. Some some properties will have to adjust more than others, um, um, which was the case before COVID. Uh, it was it was what we're going into and expecting anyway. Um, um, you know, there was there was a, a slowdown was already you could say for most professionals in the sector uh, envisaged and, and being catered for. Uh, it had to happen. You can't have the, that boom forever. It's not even healthy or, or sustainable. Um, uh, this just obviously accelerated things and, um, and, and the hit might be harder than, than, was, than was planned for. Absolutely. Kevin, is that your thoughts as well? You're lucky you get to go second. <laughs> well, uh... Look, I mean, uh, as of now, yes, I, I agree with you in 100%. Even before COVID, we were starting to see a bit of a small decline or let's call it a, a price correction in, in, in the market, actually quite a bit before COVID. I would say it started in yeah. June, July last year. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were getting prepared for that and, 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 and it was slowly going from a seller's market to a buyer's market but wasn't actually there yet. Um, and now, obviously, we're in a situation where I don't want to say it's a seller's or a buyer's market. It will definitely be a buyer's market in the near future. But right now, everybody is pretty much stuck because people have in their mind that prices are going to go down further. So they found the house that they like. Um, they, they, they've, they've sort of agreed on the price and they're discussing and then they're thinking, wait a second, you know, the prices could go down another 10, 20 percent, which which, you know, um, a lot of times it, it's a commercial decision that everybody has to take. And it's it's a bit. Of, but if you're using, you know, the right agent, the right uh, person to advise you on these things, I mean, we don't have, you know, magic bosses and we're not genies, but. On the whole, like Ian said, in certain areas, um, we won't see much of a price reduction. We'll see a price correction. And it really depends on the actual person's circumstances. So when you have a real estate market, the market is, is what it is. And, and that market is there. But in every market, even when it's booming, you're gonna, always going to have situations where people have made you know, mistakes in their own businesses where they need to liquidate properties quickly to inject money into their companies, you know, all kinds of different situations, you know, inheritances where people don't agree for long, long years. And then finally they agree and they decide, you know what, there's 25 of us. So if we give a further discount, it ain't gonna, you know, kill us because it's only an extra, you know, two, 3,000 euros each. There's lots of different circumstances which, in a small island like Malta and Gozo, you know, once someone hears, oh, he got a bargain, everybody wants a bargain, which is understandable, but it's it's not the case across the board. You know, there's a lot of very good developers out there that, you know, develop the property. They, they don't really sell on plan. They wait for the buildings to be built. I mean, this is where people need to watch out for, and this is where you know, this will separate the men from the boys and the women from the girls. You know, I mean, it's 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 going to be who's strong will survive and carry on doing business and and selling good product. Because, look, we all need houses and we all need a place to sleep. So the business will never die. It might slow down for a bit, but we have to be prepared for that. And we're prepared for that. But again, the market will start rotating again. It's not a Malta thing. It's a worldwide thing. So not every market. I've just been on a Zoom call with all Remax Europe. And uh, I can tell you um, there are some countries that are only 2 3% down from last year. You know, there are countries which are 10%. There are countries as well which are 30 40%. But the majority are closer to the 10% down from last year which okay. isn't that bad okay 
now that we have hit sort of pause a little bit, do you think it's an opportunity for us to be looking at real estate more sustainably? Ian, I'll come to you first. I mean, were we doing things too quickly? Were we developing too much before all of this? Is this an opportunity to do things better? Yeah, I think I mean, situations like this worldwide are always a bit of a wake up call, a reality check, which I think the world needed, but more, to, more so in some, in some cases. I think we're going at 100 and you know, 10 miles an hour. Um, uh, things where we're just have people who are trying to just jump onto the bandwagon just to get involved on the next, you know, on what was hot and what was happening. Property is always one of those main um, items of, 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 of interest um, that everyone wants to be a part of. Suddenly everyone's a, a developer, suddenly everyone's an estate agent. It happens. So, so situations like this, like we had 10, 10 plus years ago when, when there was the recession worldwide, um, they always, I think, allow us to 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 re recalibrate, to to uh, to clean up what wasn't working, to maybe make people think more harder and, and, and deeper into what 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 is important, what matters, what doesn't. Um, and yeah, to your question, I think and I hope that those who are just building to build and those who are just selling to sell, and some who are even just buying to buy, because we always blame developers and agents, and we always, I mean, a lot of. A lot of us sometimes tend to be the bad guys. Many times, there's 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 very justified reasons because because yes, things are done carelessly, amateurishly, um, uh, and and so many times there's there's good cause for that. But then we forget sometimes that the buyers tend to be greedy too, and sometimes they go for stuff just because it looks too good, or they just because they want to have a piece of the action, um, and they get into something even sometimes against advice. Sure, Kevin has advised people like I have advised people many times. Listen, you know, um, don't rush into that or think twice before you, you know, even against our own interests of a potential sale. Sometimes, I'm not saying everyone does it, but um, the buyer would still feel he doesn't want to miss out and he wants to jump on very quickly, and they do it anyway. And then, you know, a year, two years later, or a COVID crisis later, they're all sort of coming to you and saying, "What am I going to do now? Maybe I rushed. Maybe I didn't." Blah blah blah. So we see all this. Um, just to, to sum up on your question, Joe, um, yes, I would hope developers think harder into what they're creating and, and, and don't build just to build, but build maybe with more intent, with more um, thought and, 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 and detail. And the same goes with, with, with everything else. I mean, agents who might have thought, let me just jump into the real estate industry because it's easy or now realizing, you know, how challenging it can be. And they're making, they're putting more effort into what they do, more, more doing it more there's more training happening we're finally going to be regulated as an industry which we most of us I would say leading agents have always been crying for um, um, so yeah I would say hopefully things do up across the board but the greed is a big thing the greed is a big thing that that as a nation we need to we need to I think um, um, keep in mind Absolutely. And Kevin, sort of in line with that, a question for you. Are we, as a result of COVID, going to be left with lots of empty, ugly properties? Have we built too much? Or can we still, I mean, are we going to fill these properties? Are we going to sell these properties? Or are we really going to have to change tack now? Well, um, most of the properties that are um, being built as present uh, have been pre-sold. Um, there is some question marks whether certain people who bought for speculation or, as Ian said, simple greed um, will conclude on those properties. So, yeah, I would I would I would calculate 25 to 30 percent of those uh, promise of sales will fall through over the next six to 12 months because some of them are, are, are longer and a lot of them are delayed. Um, and. Uh, at the moment, there are approximately 9,000 Airbnb properties in Malta. So obviously, this summer is going to be a miss for them, which is a big hit. Um, it's a question mark when the moratoriums get taken away from the bank. <clears throat> Will these people be able to sustain the bank loans if they have bank loans on these properties, being that this summer they didn't manage to get any income? So that could be a, 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 a big factor. Um, I'm sure there's going to be cases of people over the years 
that have invested in more than one, maybe three, four, five, six, seven, um, or even just a small block of apartments here and there might start thinking to themselves, you know, let me liquidate two properties, you know, to put myself safe because because of the bank loans and 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 these things. Um, and obviously to sell those properties, um, it's, it, it, they, have to, they have to sell them cheap to get the money quickly. Um, there's always a cost to selling quickly. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a domino effect all across the board. So, but I don't, I, I'm not one of these uh, believers with all those comments about how many empty properties there are in Malta. There are empty properties, but there are all tied up with inheritance um, we all know damn well that, uh, I'm sorry, but, uh, um, that a lot of the properties that are considered empty are people that aren't, um, uh, to sell. or not declaring that they're renting them and they're being rented anyway. Um, so there's a lot of that. So it, it, it's a question. Let's put it this way. I can tell you right now over these last seven years, you know, our agents have had very difficult times finding certain properties to sell or to rent. I mean, we gotten to points where, you know, people want in certain areas and you literally cannot find anything. And so, you know, it's, it's going to change a bit now. I think, yes, there will be people that will default. Let's wait for the, you know, the moratoriums to run out and we'll see how that tailors off. But uh, at the moment, unfortunately, COVID-19 is something that we don't know. The world doesn't know. So we really don't know how it's going to affect. I mean, we're going to see this weekend everybody probably going to restaurants and whatever. And, and, and we'll see how this thing kicks in or kicks off or, 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 or dies off on its own. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I'm not going to be one to say we should be locked down. We should be this. I think we should just leave it to the people in charge. Um, and yeah, they can get it wrong as well, but if they, you know, I'm sure they're going to do the best and try and make the best decisions for the whole country. Perfect. And, and speaking about the, the people in charge, Kevin, I'll stay with you and just ask, you know, if you were a policymaker right now in charge of the sort of decisions we should be making to drive the property market forward after all this is over and also to be injecting the, the sort of quality uh, improvement in the sector that you know I've, I've heard you talk about before what policy decisions should we be taking right now both from an industry quality perspective a protecting of the industry and also of a quality when it comes to what we're creating going forward well one thing one thing I would do is I would uh, make make some kind of law or some kind of restriction for um, people selling properties on plan without permits in hand as I think this has become a major, major issue in Malta. Um, probably there'll be a few people that want me to want to shoot me for saying that, but it's the honest to God truth in my, in my eyes. Um, I, we're all here to make money. There's no doubt about it, but in my eyes, I've seen too many people um, end up in very bad situations, you know, young couples, which is awful who have, you know, bought a property plan, Two years ago, they were supposed to move in maybe this summer. And, you know, the, these properties still haven't even been started yet. They haven't even started excavating the site. And I'm not talking about a few. There's quite a few out there. So, you know, that on that, my advice would be get the right advice. You know, speak to an, an agent friend or, or someone that really knows the market and ask about that particular developer, whether you should give that developer any money and whether he will actually deliver on time or deliver it all. And, and, and that, that's one policy that I really believe should be done. And it would, it would make the, the business a bit more, you know, straight, at least if the permits out, what they have to build, they have to build. you don't end up in a situation where, Oh, all of a sudden you don't have a box room or, or the kitchen has lost four square meters or, or this and, and it's take it or leave it and blah, blah. It's, it's, it, it, it creates a big mess, which, uh, worked for a long time but i think now would be a great time to put a policy in like that um the quality we have we have some developers who who uh are building some decent quality stuff and we have some developers that aren't building quality stuff and uh i think in these cases this is where 
it's very important to get uh, advice from the right agent and, and, and to know and even go into what, um, what, what, what materials are you going to be getting at the end of the, when this thing, when this property is ready? I mean, there are, there are lots of uh, people that just go out there and sign a promise of sale with, with someone telling them that they're going to give them tiles at 20 square meters. I would advise them, take a look at the tiles, show them in a sample, Let, you know, protect yourself because you're doing the biggest investment of your life. And the worst thing that can happen to you is that really goes wrong. Um, and, you know, there's many ways to protect yourself, but yeah, get right advice, speak to the right people, don't jump into things. Um, but, you know, property is always a great investment. It always will be a great investment. It always lives the cycle of the 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the minimum it will do is go up, you know, or double in price in 20 years. And in, in, in cases in Malta, you know, in the last 10 years, we've doubled, we've even tripled in price. So, um, Property is something that's in the bloodstream of the Maltese, and uh, it will always be the number one choice for investment. But I think today people need to be uh, a bit more careful in what they're doing. Okay. Thank you for that insight, Kevin. Over to you, Ian, just for any, you know, any policy changes that you would suggest if you sort of had the floor amongst politicians at the moment. What should we be doing to better regulate the market now that we've had this shock that we've had? No, I, I couldn't agree more with, with what Kevin said about um, uh, regulating um, off-plan developments uh, more than they ever have been. I mean, the fact that we don't even have escrow um, sort of policies here in Malta where a deposit can be paid to a developer. And in some cases, a developer, uh, with all respect, will, will demand to have that deposit um, uh, even before potentially permits are out, like Kevin said. And um, the worst thing is that that is released from the notary um or the client to to the vendor and then if, if god forbid something happens which sometimes does then obviously it becomes a whole legal thing um so that definitely i think is, is something that escrow you know um let's not go from one extreme to another now where it becomes um impractical to actually operate but uh, i think that some attention definitely needs to be given there um i think regulation of the industry as a whole i mean we've seen the, the unfortunate accidents just before this crisis uh, uh, you know, with, with, with um, even lives being lost, you know, there has to be regulation, respecting the neighbors more, respecting the way it's being built, respecting the workmen more, um, the quality of build that Kevin mentioned too. Um, you know, if you're being promised this and they've been given a fancy video or a fancy visual on something, you know, for God's sakes, let's, you know, let's follow it through and not fool that excited person who came to sit in a quick presentation and might have maybe with his inexperience fallen from it. Let's keep in mind today, um, uh, I mean, fair enough, each to his own, a number of developers have set up internal sales forces and sales teams, you know, that are even more sometimes aggressive than, than, than one might think an agent might be. Um, and, you know, they go in, their clients go into them because there's a lot of direct marketing. They're told and promised whatever they might be. And there isn't that little buffer for them to think about sometimes they're hyped into excitement there and then and they might just leave a reservation for there and then this needs to be like i said before a lot of it is greed too i mean people aren't babies and they should have a bit of you know um uh, intelligence to think something through um but but likewise it's like if you have to go to a stockbroker who promises some some fantastical returns to someone who knows nothing about the market um, obviously, that is irresponsible. The same applies to a developer or an agent who, who, um, um, who mis misleads um, a buyer. The agency side is going to be regulated. And let's hope, after all these years of us pushing for it, that it's regulated properly. And not, you know, the serious people are going ahead and doing their courses like I know Kevin's people are, we are, and a number of the other agencies are, um, because we have to do so by next year. Um, uh, and then others just, you know, take it easy and are not, are not, are not enforced or are not um, uh, regulated or, or penalized as they need to be. So, so, yes, I think the sector, the prime minister, funnily enough, just after confirming that we're not going to get any aid uh, himself, confirmed that, um, that the industry is an important industry and they're banking on it when we come to the revival of, of, of the economy. And agreed whether people hate it love it or hate it uh, 
it's like Kevin said, I mean, this has always been in, in Maltese people's DNA. It's always been there. Um, you know, we've been through wars, we've been through famine to some extent, we've been through whatever we've been through, um, recessions and all. And um, people still kept buying property. It remains their best investment. Companies still own properties as assets. Um, so if we want to safeguard what we believe is an important sector, then make sure it's well regulated and it's protecting all because that's why you end up with the with the with the sometimes maybe hatred is a is a wrong is a hard word but yes you get a lot of that uh, animosity against people in the players in the industry many times not because of the actual player themselves um, um, so I think that's my two cents worth yeah thank you Ian there and um, just uh, sort of and uh, did anybody think I'm not hearing you properly. Yeah, I just lost you though. Did we both lose that or, or, or just me? I think we both lost her. We can start talking about her now. Central <laughs> bio. There she is. You lost me. I'm back. And yeah. I'm not sure. We're talking what about I an <laughs> No, as if I ever could. Um, uh, now, I, I was just asking the question. I believe I lost internet connection there, so apologies to our viewers for that. I was just asking the question about if you are buying at the moment, if you are interested in buying property, how are the real estate companies working with other stakeholders, like the banks, et cetera? Are you working together to provide for buyers? Uh, um, we Go ahead, Ian. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, no, I, I think I think um, uh, we, we we're always working hand in hand with the banks. With the banks, I think they talk to us. We talk to them. Um, obviously, they're, an, they're a critical uh, cog in the, in this wheel. Um, uh, and and yes, I mean the banks are very important at the moment more than ever. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the banks have that sort of reputation where they're there, not they're not there when you, you know they're there when you don't need them and not there when you need them. Um, um, which sometimes, unfortunately, it can be the case. Um, I know some people in that industry might be swearing at me at the moment, but um, but uh, it's important now more than ever. Some people have lost their jobs or have 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 been impacted in their jobs, um, um, or obviously are not seeing or not going to see the income that they've been used to until they get back on track. Um, it's not a time to abandon them. It's a time to to be there for them. You know, if they had a good track record, a good history, a good you know. Um, Good jobs before it doesn't mean they're going to remain unemployed for the rest of their life or it doesn't mean that they're going to remain on on this hit that they've taken for the rest of their life hopefully so so you know the banks need to be there to support um uh, fair enough they can't expose themselves fully but they need to be supportive i've heard of one or two cases um, um which are which are obviously not cases you like to hear about where where a buyer, uh, and I know it was a genuine case, it wasn't being used as an excuse to get out of a convey or of, of a deal, where a, site, where, where a bank had approved a, a facility for a buyer buying a, 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 another home, um, a second home, and they um, had released the deposit on the on the, and now the bank is sort of, um, because he's had a bit of a hit with his job, is suddenly um, reconsidering the file, which, you know, once they've given a commitment, um, uh, it doesn't mean this guy is doomed for life. You, you know, you can't let him potentially lose his deposit or any other commitments he might have put out there. So, yeah, we're just talking about the banks here, but but it's it's everyone has to has to um, uh, do their bit. Between us, agents, we talk to each other, we share ideas and 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 and, um, and, and concerns. We talk to developers where developers reach out to us, which many of them do, and many of them come for for advice or. Opinion and thoughts and if they are doing things we think that are not going to be supportive of what's to come we'll open their eyes or try to so yeah i think it's very important to all stakeholders work together and yeah. and and feed off each other's knowledge or, or, or sentiment in the market absolutely and kevin with that in mind is there opportunity at the moment is there opportunity to invest if i if i was looking to buy is this a good time to be doing that yeah, well, I mean, it's a good time to be looking and keeping your eyes open. Um, I believe, yes, there will be some uh, good opportunities coming up in the near future. Obviously, it's 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 a shame, but uh, yes, people will 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 have troubles where they'll 
they'll need to liquidate some assets and stuff. So yeah, like like a cycle with everything. Um, there's always opportunities out there, um, and 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 I think in the you know coming months there will be some opportunities. Uh, but it, it, it will be all circumstantial in the sense of the circumstances of the seller um, and, and, of course, the circumstances of the buyer. Um, just to mention about the, the banks, I mean, I, I think the banks, to a certain extent, are, are wanting to do some business, but uh, the bureaucratic... Uh, system that's in place and and like ian just said this thing that a bank can pull out a sanctioned letter just be okay i mean the guy might have lost his job but i'm sure if he had a decent enough job to get a bank loan he can you know the world isn't coming to an end he can find another job uh, put in a position like that where they're in a position they've saved up everything they have to buy a property or even they've saved up their first property or they've saved up everything they have to buy a rental property and because of this COVID-19, you pull a sanction letter out and you you uh, you put someone in a position where obviously the developer might be in trouble as well. So he 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 doesn't want to give the money back. And it, I don't I just don't think it's correct. It's it shouldn't be allowed. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Ian, have we still got you? All right, we're you? back. Yep. Yeah, a few internet problems today. Um, uh, so I'm going to yeah. come to both of you now in turn, starting with you, Kevin, and then you, Ian. Yeah. You just yeah. give us one important thing that businesses or buyers could take from this period. If it's one thing that you would say, let's learn from this time, what would that be, Kevin? Well, I think uh, this was all a big reality check for all of us um i think we need to sit back contemplate on you know what's happening around us i think a lot of us have realized how important our families are and friends are at, at a time like this and i think uh in all reality a lot of us have realized that you know it's not bad to put the brakes on a bit um and sit back and uh relax and uh, live a normal life instead of as fast as we were going. Cause I mean, Malta was getting, you know, ridiculous. I remember one of the things I used to tell people why I moved from the States to Malta is because Malta is great. It's, 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 you know, slow pace. What can be done tomorrow will be, will be what can be done tomorrow can be done tomorrow. You know, it's not a problem, but I mean, these last, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, man, it's been, you know, it even took a toll on me. I feel, I actually feel so much better over these last three months. So that's my positive note of uh, COVID nineteen. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm actually feeling better as a person. I'm feeling more relaxed. I'm feeling uh, not so. You know, I don't get upset about too many things anymore. I just, you know, play them out. And so I, I, I've taken definitely more positive out of COVID nineteen than negative. And, and 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 that's my my honest take on it. I mean, it's 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 yeah, it's not it's it's crap. I mean, I can't stand this COVID nineteen. But you know, if you put it in perspective of everything around you, it, it's not a bad situation. But it needs it needs to end soon. Huh? It needs to, you know. Hopefully, we get out of it. I'm sure all those great scientists and all those, you know, our doctors and nurses and everybody who's on the front line and you know, Donald everybody Trump. serving serving. <laughs> I like Trump. <laughs> I probably there's about to save to save the world. Ninety-five percent of the audience probably want to shoot me right now, but I actually uh, like Trump. Him. Trump's not allowed in this conversation. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, I lose brilliant. A point there. Brilliant, Kev. Liking the positivity, liking that approach. Brilliant, Ian. Anything to follow up on that as the most important thing to take away from this? No, I, I couldn't agree with Kevin more. I mean, it's you know, there's there's a lot of good, good um, and positive. Um, things to take out of it. Uh, obviously, none of us like what's what's gone on, but but it has been a, a big reality check. It's it's slowed. It's it's made us all realize what is important. I mean, and let's face it, other than family, health, um, and the things you love, um, uh, you know, everything else is is, is nice, but secondary. Um, I think it's um, it is it is important not to easily and quickly fall back into the rut the world was in and, and more time in particular i think um human nature will probably 
sort of um, let let people get back to normality before they've even realized it. And maybe yes, let us let us possibly slow down a bit and 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 not not let that elastic band sort of uh, fly all the way back um, to where it was. Um, I think I think there will be opportunities. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure there's like like Kevin said before, there always are in cycles like this. Um, we as Bel Air recently, um, uh, in fact, we're about to go out it soon, did a pretty interesting survey on the market um, 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 where, where we asked a number of, of questions to, to try and identify people's sentiment and all. And you know what? The, the majority of respondents, and there was a, a good turnout in this, the majority of respondents said that, you know, as soon as the next opportunity comes along in property, they're going to be there to, 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 try, and, to try and get a piece of it. I think more of sustainability, um, and I said before, greed. And I, I, I think it's just, it's just, it's too everywhere in 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 our um, in our life today. Um, uh, so let's, uh, yes, let's let's take these positive lessons out of it. Absolutely. So a brilliant interview there. Thank you both for bringing with me today on the boardroom. Lots of positives to take from that, lots of potential opportunity, but also some really good lessons to take us forward into our economic future. Thank you both again. Thank you to everyone watching us at home or at the office today. And we'll see you next time on the boardroom. Thanks. Joe. Thank you, Joe. Ciao, Kev. Bye-bye. Ciao, Ian. Bye. Ciao.